Hey y'all, thank you for watching Afrobat TV. Today I'm coming at y'all with another unpopular opinions video. Um, I plan to like have like a million of these because these are really fun. And also like I am somebody like literally my whole life who has had unpopular opinions. And you know, I'm a, I'm a feather ruffler, you know, if you will. So um, yeah, like I said in the previous one, if you disagree with anything that I say, that's cool, but nobody needs to be bullied, no harassing, don't curse nobody out, you know, don't call nobody out their name, you know what I'm saying? Get out your feelings, all right? Like, it's, it's not that deep, it's not that deep, all right? So, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. All right, so the first one, first unpopular opinion I have is that you can eat food past the Best Buy date. Um, <laughs> I feel like obviously manufacturers have done this to us on purpose, but a best buy date and a sell by date is not an expiration date, y'all. And I feel like the common person doesn't know this. And the only reason why I know this is because I cared enough to Google it, okay? A, a best buy date is basically the date that the manufacturer thinks that their product is at its peak quality. And a sell by date is for the store to know like when you know, that should be out of their store buy, but neither one of these things tell you when the product is actually going to expire, right, y'all? I've eaten foods like a week past the sell by date or the best by date, and, and as long as the food obviously doesn't look weird, doesn't smell weird, doesn't taste weird, then it's it's fine like why do you have to throw away your food over some arbitrary number you know what i'm saying like people people might call me nasty for saying that okay i guess i'm nasty so be it but guess what i'm not wasting my milk i'm not wasting my meat i'm not wasting my money on food that is perfectly fine just because some arbitrary date tells me to like if your food looks fine tastes fine smell fine it's probably fine y'all and so just learn to google stuff all right just do your research that's it the next one is that child support should not be for no damn 18 years i find it really honestly amazing in a sadistic kind of way that like women are able to basically use men as piggy banks for basically damn near a lifetime um i feel like child support should be only during the young crucial years of the kid's life from zero to like five years old you know the man should have to pay child support based on whatever the situation is right um like for 18 like for after five years right like i just feel like the mom should be able to save that money or use it as like a head start you know what i'm saying to use it as a cushion you know so after them five years if you blow that money on you know 40 inch bust downs and and you know uh stiletto nails and all that like but your baby out here, you know, starving, looking dirty and so up. Okay, that's all on you. Like, he did his part. Yeah, the mother should just use that money as a head start. But, it's like, now, since the system is, like, 18 years, it's, like, people are asking for exorbitant amounts of money. And it's, like, <laughs> it's just unnecessary to me, y'all. Like, I just feel like 18 years is such a long time. Like, there should be some type of cap or limit on it and i just feel like that's why like you know bitches just be getting knocked up by anybody and just saying you know well, i can just put them on child support mm -hmm. but i think limiting the amount of years could kind of help deter that and like give it to people who actually need it so <laughs> My next unpopular opinion is that Keanu Reeves cannot act. <laughs> now listen, I'm a big Keanu Reeves fan, okay? He's he's handsome, he's a great actor, he's very entertaining, very well loved, he's a good person, like there's literally nothing wrong with him, but his acting and his dialogue skills are trash, y'all. <laughs> Uh, I would say The Matrix is, like, the best movie he did as far as, like, him actually acting, like, him playing a part, his dialogue, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
he's just very like monotonous when he talks and like I don't know it's kind of like weird now I I just watched John Wick 4 okay great movie 10 out of 10 really no complaints about it it was a good ass movie and he was great in that movie but all of his dialogue scenes like and if y'all notice I feel like directors and producers purposely give Keanu Reeves like very limited um dialogue I can't recite lines in a convincing manner okay <laughs> Okay, this one is kind of similar to one that I said in my previous unpopular opinions, but people who say that animals, period, are better than humans are weird and lame as hell. Like, if you're out here saying, like, oh, people are trash and I don't need friends and stuff because I got my dog or I got animals, like, you're weird, nobody like your ass. Like, I never met nobody who say animals are better than humans who, like, have friends, have a social life, and who has a likable personality. All these people are very dislikable people, disagreeable, nobody really mess with them, they lonely as hell, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, a person with actual charisma who's decent to be around does not say they prefer to be around animals than humans. Now, I understand that a person can have a connection with an animal and like an animal can be that person's best friend. Like I truly do believe that like animals and humans can have relationships um and connections with each other. Like there's so many instances of people's pets saving their lives and like pets literally dying from grief because their owner has you know passed away or whatever so i'm not like invalidating that but i'm just saying like for you to be out here saying that you prefer animals to humans i don't know buddy you're a little weird and people probably don't like your ass anyway okay this next one is like really controversial so um People should be able to abort kids who are going to come out severely, mentally, or physically disfigured without any type of judgment. I find it really weird that, like, people say, okay, abortion is fine and you don't ever have to explain to people why you're doing abortion, blah, 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 but will shame somebody for aborting a kid who will come out very disfigured, probably will never have will never be able to fend for themselves in life, um, will never have a good quality of life, they may live with pain every day, all these different types of things. Like, it's not socially acceptable to abort that kind of child, but a child who's gonna come out potentially completely normal and healthy, you think it's okay, you say it's okay to abort that kid. And, and like, you have like this moral judgment of somebody who aborts a potentially disabled or disfigured kid but you don't have that same judgment to somebody if they abort a healthy kid. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying people should be judged for each, but there is definitely a societal moral high ground, you know, against aborting a kid who's going to come out disfigured, right? Like, and, and it's weird to me, like, if you're somebody that's pro-choice but will condemn somebody for aborting a disfigured kid, it's like you're literally a contradiction right like any argument that you have against aborting disfigured kids is literally the same argument that a pro-life person would use against abortion you know what i'm saying so it's like you're like pretty hypocritical you know like if you're gonna support abortion support all abortions okay not abortions that's just gonna fit into your fake moral high ground you know what i'm saying and by disfigured kids or disabled i'm talking about somebody that's gonna be born with one eye no arms you know mentally they're ment they have like two percent of their brain um <clears throat> they can never fend for themselves. um like and somebody who is essentially just eating up resources eating up time and the thing that people don't talk about when discussing this is like parents get old they age and they have health issues of their own and it's like okay let's say like you know you're a parent you decide to keep your severely disfigured kid and it's like okay you're you're 60 years old you know what i'm saying you have arthritis you may have you know um various health conditions that you may be 
dealing with yourself and as a 60 year old person you have to take care of somebody else when you may need help with care your damn self it's like you know like when when and when the parents of these disfigured kids die it's like who's gonna take care of them you know what i'm saying like there's just so much more to this than like, oh, well, you're just practicing eugenics and you're picking and choosing and blah, blah, blah. Like, it, to me, the same arguments can be used against somebody who's aborting a completely normal and healthy kid. Like, I just don't see any valid response against somebody not wanting the burden. Like, like there's people who can't even properly take care of a normal kid, but you want to morally judge somebody if they don't want to take care of a kid who is yes going to ultimately be more expensive more time consuming more stressful um more challenging than a normal kid like none of this stuff makes sense y'all anyways next one I feel like this is something that's mostly present in the black community because I never in my life heard a non-black person say this. I could be wrong, but I'm black, mostly been around black people all my life, so that's probably why I would say this. But it is okay for preteens to wear tampons, okay? There, in case somebody out there doesn't know, there's this stupid ass thing in the black community where like a girl is fast or is, but this is just so laughably like just just idiotic <laughs> there's this thing in the black community where like people say a girl is like fast or sexually deviant for wearing tampons and it means that if you wear a tampon that means that you're not a virgin anymore and it's just the stupidest shit ever and like there's so many like different ideas like that that are just in society period and all it tells me is that like there's literally just a genuine lack of proper education like sex education in American uh, society just period because of the shit that people be saying. First of all, a menstrual product. It is a product meant to help someone manage a biological function that they cannot control. How is somebody somehow sexually deviant for using a specific type of feminine product? Like, what if her flow is too heavy for pads? You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you're a 13 year old daughter, okay, she gets her cycle and she has a really heavy flow. Um, and she suggests to you, hey mom, you know, I saw a commercial or, you know, some of my classmates were talking about tampons. You're gonna call your daughter a slut for, uh, <laughs> for using a certain type of feminine hygiene product? Like, bruh, like, society is just doomed, y'all. Like, if you think this, you really need to open up a damn textbook or, like, really do some serious research because you're very, you're just dumb for thinking this. I'm sorry, you're dumb. <laughs> all right this next one is fat people should not be cops or doctors um now <laughs> i feel like this one should explain itself but i'm gonna keep it short and sweet how as a doctor can okay as a doctor like you know you push wellness onto people da, 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 tell people take care of themselves blah 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 and you're unhealthy yourself like how is somebody gonna take what you say seriously as a professional you know what i'm saying like that's like you know i have a doctor let's for example say my doctor 350 pounds and they telling me oh yeah susan you know you need to lose weight because your labs say this and blah 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 and it's like um excuse me sir like you're okay leave that alone um <laughs> And like cops obviously shouldn't be fat. Like, and you know what? For a while, I thought that there was like a physical expectation for a cop. Like, I don't think shit should be like very strict. Like, I'm not saying every cop gotta look like The Rock or um, Titus O'Neil or um, Terry Crews. Like, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying like a cop should be in some type of physical shape. 
because how are you gonna defend and protect your community if you getting out of breath like you can't capture no assailant like that you know what i'm saying like or what if you have to like literally you know fight hand to hand with somebody and your ass getting tired and now the assailant is gonna whoop your ass and get away like i don't know i don't know i just feel like cops should have like some type of mandatory rigorous training so many times a week or they should like i said they don't have to be ripped and be out here looking like arnold schwarzenegger but i do think they should be in some type of physical shape and like you know be able to run be able to just have that stamina you know what i'm saying to do their job a lot of black women gonna get mad at me for this one but i don't care um y'all we need to just cut the nonsense wearing bonnets in public is ghetto as hell <laughs> I can't believe that this is even a debate or something that even has to be explained. The reason why wearing a bonnet is seen as like taboo or ghetto is because a bonnet is an undergarment. It is something you wear to sleep, something you wear to sleep. Now, a head scarf or a head wrap those things are more acceptable to wear out in public because you can style a scarf in a certain type of way or a head wrap in a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? That it's acceptable to walk out of the house with. I don't see anything wrong wearing that. But to walk out of your house with a bonnet on, like, it just says that you don't care. Like, you don't care about how you walk out the house, blah, blah, blah. Like, if your natural hair don't look good, okay, just put that shit in the puff. If your braids don't look good, bruh, just put that shit in a bun. If your wig don't look good, okay, tie a scarf over it. Put a hat on. Like, there's so many ways around having a bad hair day that it does not include you having to wear a bonnet when you walk out of the house. Like, me as a black woman, I mean, I'm not going to judge people that harshly over it, but just know that, like, it is a stereotypical image and... You know, you cannot get mad that people may have a certain view of you because you're literally playing into a stereotype. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, yeah, that's that's it, y'all. Get mad at me if you want to. Represent yourselves out here better than that. All right, there's ways around a bad hair day. Okay, I'll be having bad hair days and you'll see me walking around here with a bonnet on, okay? Put on a scarf, put on a head wrap, um, put your hair in a bun. Um, all right, this next one, black people everywhere are gonna call me a coon and a sellout for saying this, but I don't care. Um, I do not care if a non-black person says the N-word, and let me tell you why. Okay, first off, the N-word is, the meaning of the N-word is very context-based, okay? So, if a white person, they're rapping a song and it says nigga, or, you know, they may be raised in a more urban, maybe even ghetto environment, and, you know, the black folks around them say nigga, and then they say nigga too, how how are they racist for that like you know what i'm saying I, I just i just don't i just don't get it or like um and and people say like oh well what non-black people shouldn't say nigga because of the, the the history behind it but it's like other racial slurs have history behind them too you know what i'm saying i'm not not gonna say no racial slurs on here i might put them on the screen but like any of these racial slurs you cannot say that shit and like no matter what context these racial slurs are in you it is not okay but like nigga it's like okay you can be like oh what's up my nigga that nigga over there tripping oh fuck that nigga like it's so many different contexts that you can use nigga in but like other racial slurs there is no socially acceptable right way to use those so it's like in my opinion if the word is so bad, nobody should be saying it then. You know what I'm saying? Like, for black people to even say the N-word is also problematic because we are giving life to something that has, quote-unquote, oppressed us for centuries. But then on the flip side, black people will say, okay, well, we're taking control back. Okay, if we have so much control over it, why are we giving it so much power when uh, a white person says nigga? And even if they do say it in a malicious way, it's like the best way to respond to that is just not care. It's not to give it so much power. You know what I'm saying? Like people in general in society say like, okay, we shouldn't give words power, da, 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 da. But we continue to give words power, you know, like 
Um, I don't know. And also, like, you can tell if someone's intentions behind saying stuff, all right? You can tell if someone's being backhanded. You can tell if someone's trying to demean you or offend you or insult you, blah, blah, blah. Like, you can tell. Okay, you're not stupid. So, either we let people say nigga based on the context or nobody gets to say nigga at all. That's my stance. And I don't care if white people say nigga because we we it's just no it's just stupid how like we can say nigga but not other racial slurs you know what i'm saying and it's like nigga is just put on this pedestal against other racial slurs that it's like oh my god if you say that like your your career is over and blah 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 but you can say another racial slur and like nobody's gonna be tripping off it you know whatever Um, this next one is gonna be quick. Um, you're not a rapper if you don't write your own stuff. You're an entertainer. I mean, there's really nothing else to expound upon on that. Um, and the last one I want to talk about is that there is nothing wrong with vanilla sex. I feel like our society is so sexually deviant and porn has ruined us so much that when we see just a regular sex act take place, like, you know, just regular missionary, regular doggy, regular cowgirl or whatever it is, people view that as vanilla and boring. And I just don't understand, like, what is up with that. Like, y'all don't see how it's just weird that, like people sexual and listen i'm not shaming anybody for what they're into sexually but i'm just saying that like the standards on sex is like becoming more and more demented more and more disgusting and weird like to the point where like oh throwing up on a man's uh you know penis while giving him oral or like um bukkake films and all of this other disgusting stuff is like so like, this stuff is hardcore, but it's, like, so commonplace for people to see that when they see normal sex taking place, it's like, oh, that's seen as boring and that's this, that's that. Like, me, I'm not into all the extra shit, all right? Like, just give me one man. I just want one partner. I like men. Um, I like the, the basic things in sex. Um, you know, I like some kinky stuff, but, you know, as far as bodily fluids and having multiple partners... And, and all of these different types of things, it's like, and, and people will say like, oh, well, my sex life is boring for that. How is my sex life boring? And see, and see, this, this is one thing, like, there's a lot of hypocrisy here because all these people who's into this gross ass, freak ass shit, like, okay, they will say don't kink shame, but me, like, I'm into vanilla sex and people will shame me and say that my sex life is trash. It's like, that is still kink shaming, y'all. Like, it's just, it's just hypocritical to me. Like, and just because I'm not into this gross ass, nasty ass freak shit, throwing up and spitting on dicks and, and just all of this disgusting ass stuff that you see in porn, like, that doesn't mean my sex life is trash. Like, are you my partner? Have we done anything? Like, until me and you do something, you cannot say my sex life is trash. That's how I feel about it. And if you're a person out there that just likes normal sex, you know, you like some kinky things, but not anything that's disgusting. And like, you know, you're not trying to depict pile drivers and all these re re unrealistic ass, dumb ass sex positions and these sex acts and all that. Like, do your thing, bro. Don't worry about what all these stupid ass people are saying. That's the end, y'all. Once again, hope y'all enjoyed it. If you disagree on, if you disagree with me on anything, that's cool. Just be civilized. Um, this wasn't meant to bully or offend or upset anybody. These are just my opinions. Opinions are not facts. And um, yeah, expect more of these in the future. <laughs>